Hi, it is Friday, so I've got a new module for you. Um, we are starting to get into our core areas of linguistics, so this is what makes up a language. And we're going to start um, this week with phonetics and phonology, and then next week we'll continue with morphology and syntax. So phonetics and phonology, these both have to do with sound. Now, um, phonetics and phonology are related to each other, but they're slightly different. How are they different? So phonetics is just the study of raw sounds, the um, consonants and vowels, how the um, tongue, you know, what parts of, uh, of the mouth, the tongue and the teeth and the, um, you know, what the vocal cords are doing that type of thing. Um, phonology is when um, the phonologists look at a specific language or maybe a couple of different languages and they're looking at um, patterns, sound patterns in those languages. So they are very much related but they are uh, different fields of study. Okay, So both of these are very important for um, emerging um, reading skills, the develop the development of literacy skills, and they're very, very important for our second language learners. Okay, so very important concepts to understand um, for this week. So um, we get into this uh, material. You can see we have a lot of assignments this week. There are nine, um, but when you get into it, you're going to see that uh, some of these, especially the quizzes, they're real short. So it's not as bad as it seems. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first one is a quiz on um, the consonants of English. And we're just, you know, for uh, when we're looking at our, the sounds, we're just going to focus on English, okay? Just the, the, the consonants and vowels of the English language for right now, um, just because it's a little bit simpler. So I do have a video that was made for you by a, a linguist who posted his video online. I really like the way he explains it. So he is going to talk about this and the video isn't too long, just three questions only. So make sure that you, you know, you might need to watch it a couple times and uh, you do have three chances to take the quiz. So hopefully everyone can get 100% on this. And then the second one, same thing. It's another video um, by him. And then three questions again. And then there's another slightly longer quiz. This one is based on this document called The Sounds of Language Phonetics. This is written by um, a professor at, at Fresno State who um, also is a, a part-time instructor here at Fresno City too, um, Dr. Ogbayani. And so you should uh, have this document in front of you while you're taking the quiz. You can go through it, you can skim through it, and then look for the answers to the quiz questions as you are um, taking the quiz. And again, you have three chances to take the quiz. Uh, then we've got another um, quiz. Again, this one is slightly longer. There's a short video and make sure that you um, read through the definitions first and then a PowerPoint that I made and the quiz is based on the PowerPoint, but you kind of have to have the background information from the definitions and from what uh, Dr. Um, Ainsworth says before. Okay. Um, then we've got a um, couple of cool assignments here. The first one is <coughs> comparing um, the vowels of Spanish and English. And so I've got some things for you to read about the um, how to pronounce the vowels in Spanish and English, and then a couple of different videos. One is a video of a um, teacher who is teaching English speakers to speak Spanish, and one is a video um, teaching Spanish speakers to, te to speak English, okay? So make sure that you watch both of them. And what I'm asking you to do is to 
um, explain the difference between the quality of English vowels and Spanish vowels, okay? So, um, you know, not only, you know, like how many they are, there are and, you know, what kinds of vowels they are, but also, you know, what, uh, the way that you pronounce them, okay? So think about that as you are reading through the information and listening to the two teachers in the videos, okay? Now, um, I know many of you speak, um, of course, everyone speaks English, but many of you speak Spanish, and some of you speak Spanish very fluently. So you may think that this is gonna be kind of easy, and those of you who don't speak Spanish, you think, oh, well, I'm at a disadvantage here. Um, actually, it might be a little bit uh, difficult if you are very fluent in Spanish, because this is gonna be kind of like some subconscious knowledge for you, and you're really gonna have to kind of uh, go deep and kind of forget about that. Really just think about what you are reading and listening to, okay, as you go through this, all right? Um, and you remember you're just focusing on the vowels here, okay? The next one is comparing all the sounds of Hmong and English. And so I've got some um, information for you to read, a couple of websites to go through, and then um, a list of the consonants and vowels. And what I want you to do is to um, explain to me um, different, some different words that you think that, um, English words that Hmong speakers are going to have trouble pronouncing. And then as um, an English speaker, what do you think will be the most difficult thing about pronouncing the Hmong language if you were to um, try to learn it, okay? So there's no you know 100% right answer for this. There's gonna be many, many answers. Uh, but you know everything that you know about English or um, you know phonology in general here, you're going to come up with an answer, explain why, justify why this is going to be um, a difficult for these language learners. Okay. All right. And then I've got. Um, really just an article here about the importance of teaching phonetics and phonology. So I've got some definitions I'd like you to go through first. And then really what you're doing is just taking out the most important parts of the article that you read and then at the end a short reaction to it. You know, what do you think? What do you think are the most important parts of the article? What did you get out of the article? Another summary about teaching phonological awareness and some questions here. Why is it important? And then the very last thing is a pretty open-ended discussion. Okay, so the most important thing that you learned about phonetics, phonology, teaching phonological awareness, you know, what do you think about it? Why do you think it's important? Um, and then for your responses, try to find someone who is writing about something that maybe you didn't think of, or maybe you think is kind of important, something that you can add to. And let's see if we can get into a really good discussion. Um, this topic is very important. Like I said, really important for um, literacy skills, developing literacy skills in kids and also for our language learners. So there's some really important concepts that we're getting into and I'm really interested to see what you all have to say in the discussion. Um, I am gonna be working really hard to get through your lesson plans um, for this week. 
because I really want to give you some good feedback on those. Next week, we're going to be writing another lesson plan. So that's why I want to make sure that I give everybody some good feedback on the, um, the lesson plans for this week. Okay, let me know if you have any questions or anything comes up. Uh, this part can be a little bit challenging, so don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions about anything or if anything gets confusing. You can also visit the PASS Center with any questions about anything. Um, Carrie is there to help you. Uh, he's there almost every day of the week, so uh, not on the weekends, but during the week. And um, I'm uh, you know, available through email. You can uh, meet me on Zoom. Also, um, we can make an appointment if my office hours don't work for you. And um, yeah, let me know um, and don't hesitate to um, ask me any questions about anything. All right, have a great weekend and I will be talking to you. All right, bye-bye.